the next tutorial in the Java for Beginners series is building your own first Java application. I assume at this point that you have already reviewed tutorials 1 and 2 that I have posted earlier. You have JDK installed, you have TextPad installed or you are going to use the Notepad. My demo is going to be on Windows operating system. Now some of you might be using either Linux or Mac then in that case you will have to find your own tools but other than that the concepts remain the same. So here is the source code of some application that we would develop in Java. You would compile and run it in Java and uh, I will tell you a little bit more about this application but just to get you quickly started what I want to do is to write a some function which would output hello world onto the console. So if I can run if I can compile and run this application I should be able to run pretty much anything using the JDK that I have installed. If you already have the text pad installed then if you go to tools and external tools you should have couple of commands available there. One called compile Java and the other one called run Java application. If you do not have the text pad then you can use the DOS command or the command window to compile and run Java application which I will be showing you shortly. Okay so I open the text pad and I type that code the one that I showed you earlier here and I saved the file as hello world.java. Be careful with the uppercase lowercase combinations because Java is a completely case sensitive programming language including the file names. Okay so that's how I have saved the file. Now I can go to tools, external tools, compile Java and it came back with a message saying that the tool completed successfully meaning the program was compiled successfully. Now it may be more interesting to see what if there was an error. So I'm going to remove one of the square brackets and then go back and try compiling the program and in this case the output doesn't look that nice. It says uh, you got one error and in this case it clearly telling me what the error is. It says, it says seems like you have the closing square bracket missing on line number two. So let's go back and fix that one and uh, try compiling the program. So in this case it uh, compiled successfully. So we were able to compile the program. Now if you want to run the program go to external tools run Java application and in this case it will open up the command window or the DOS window and it will run your application. Apparently it did. It printed hello world in the cons console window and it's ready uh, for me to press any key so it can continue so that I can continue on uh, with the rest of the development. So press the enter key so we are done. So we were able to successfully compile and run a Java application. Next I'm going to show you how you can also compile and run the same application at the DOS prompt. This is the technique you will have to use if you are using the notepad editor. So what you need to do here is uh, go to the folder where you have saved the file. This is where I saved my file. I just want to verify that I have the file there. So here is my file hello world.java. So that's the file I have. Then to compile the program you type java c the name of the file which has the Java extension. Type in the complete file name hello world.java and it comes back to the DOS prompt without any other messages. It means that your compilation succeeded and at this point it created a class file. It created a file called hello world.class. Now we are ready to run the program and you do that by typing Java the name of the class without the extension and now it ran the program it output the same string. 
So this is how you can compile and run your application at the DOS prompt. Okay, so we were able to compile and run a little Java application both using TextPad and using the command prompt. So now let's look at the application that we wrote earlier. So what I was trying to do here is essentially test my installation. Did I have the Java compiler and the runtime correctly installed so that I can start developing the application? And the answer was yes. So first of all, let's look at the statement. System.out.println hello world. System.out, think about the system.out as the console object. It's a predefined console object. Print line is a member function that works on that object. Remember, Java doesn't have functions. Java does not have any global functions. Anything that you call, any function that you call is always a member of some class or an object. So in this case, think about the object as system.out or the console and you are applying the print line function on that object, meaning print with a line feed on that object, on the console object. So that's the line we want. And like in most programming languages, you can't write a line of code all by, all by itself. It must belong, it must go inside a function. The function in Java is main. That's the function which provides the entry point for every Java application. Every Java application that you write must have a main function defined this way. We'll talk more about you know what that really means, but the function must be public, static, it must have a void as the return type, that's how the name should be spelled, and it could optionally accept command line arguments. This is where the function begins, this is where the function ends. And since Java is a completely object-oriented programming language, a function cannot be written all by itself. A function must go inside some class. So we are going to come up with a class, class hello world, begin class, end class, and we place the function inside the class. So I suggest you try this one out yourself and uh, once you are able to compile, compile and run this application, you are ready to move on to the next chapter. So what's next? In the next tutorial, I'll talk about variables and data types, and then we will move on to the programming constructs. How do we make a decision in Java? There are two ways of doing it. One, by using an if statement or using a switch statement. For writing loops or executing your code more than one time, executing a section of your code more than one time, you have a for loop and a while loop. So that's what is coming up next. Thank you.